I will never forget the impression I had when I went there for the first time. I did not expect and did not imagine to feel anything more than a visual effect and a passing interest that such a landmark exists in Lithuania. Yet I felt something very special. I think I can explain it as an intense spiritual concentration. It was a phenomenon that revealed that the people who traveled here came with profound belief and somehow they left part of this belief behind them. It is still present. The small hill was of great significance. It was a symbol of the Lithuanian spirit. Meanwhile, what was Lithuania? Lithuania was considered to be one of the Soviet Union's provinces, one of the republics. If the hill had been full of red stars with such slogans as long live the communist party, they would have put up these things themselves. On the southeast corner of the Baltic coast, the seagoing traveler discovers a low-lying land, Lithuania, country of a thousand lakes, meandering rivers, primeval forests, old villages. The severe yet mystical beauty of its landscapes conjures an echo of ancient times. Historically, Lithuania traded throughout the world Baltic gold, amber, a symbol of happiness. Over the past 200 years, however, this wealth has not seemed to bring the happiness promised. Throughout history, Lithuania has suffered invasions from Sweden, Germany and Russia. Small wonder that one of the most typical aspects of Lithuanian landscape remains the fortified hills. Jurgaichu Hill, a few kilometers north of Shaolai city, is one such example. According to historians, the mound was also used since pagan times as a place of worship. Here, the sacred fire was maintained by young priestesses. Early Lithuanians worshipped nature and natural objects, such as carved wooden monuments called krikstje. With the arrival of Christianity in 1251, they were replaced by crosses, henceforth placed at crossroads and throughout the countryside. Since then, Lithuania, the last country of Europe to be baptized has been called the Land of Crosses. There are many legends describing how the first crosses appeared on this hill, which local people named the Hill of Crosses. Historical evidence, though, dates the very first crosses after the years 1830 and 1863, following two important uprisings of the Lithuanian nation against the Russian annexations. From then on, it seems as if the whole of Lithuanian history has converged in this hill. I am now a folk artist. I have gained recognition. In those days, however, I fully realized that they could come and arrest or punish me at any time. I felt that I was being pressured. Some of my works were not admitted to official exhibitions. They would say that my artistic themes were not suitable. 
I didn't do what I was supposed to do. But the nation needed a cross carver. It was a form of resistance against the occupation. Many crosses would share the fate of the famous three crosses of Vilnius. The teaching of catechism was prohibited. Most churches and all monasteries were closed or turned into warehouses. During this period, this small hill signified to the whole nation a challenge and a resistance to the occupation. For the young Christians, who lived under the motto, God and Homeland, it came to symbolize their homeland. The Lithuanians responded with hammer and chisel to the Soviet hammer and sickle. The Hill of Crosses became a regular meeting place for these groups. Formerly dangerous, today a meeting with a guardian of order can be a very polite and friendly conversation. We visited one in this house where no address is shown. Yes, we patrolled the Hill of Crosses. However, we never fully realized the reasons behind it. We were on patrol, but we did not direct the action. We executed orders. We only did what we were ordered by the Interior Ministry, or more often the KGB. It was they that told us what to do. Reactionary tactics intensified in the last five years of Brezhnev's rule. The reason for starting the patrol was simple enough, to prevent people from building crosses, especially with anti-Soviet inscriptions, for religious holidays or some other memorable dates linked with Lithuania's statehood, such as February 16th, Lithuanian Independence Day. I carried three crosses. I took the first one from Lok Sodis, where I was the priest for five parishes. I walked 60 kilometers through five parishes with bare, bleeding feet. It was in October, but I don't recall the year. I started at 9 p.m. After 13 hours at 10 a.m., I eventually reached the hill. I had this intention, as a priest and a believer, to ask for God's help so that our friends would leave and my homeland would be free. The demolitions were carried out over a long period, between 1960 and 1977. Local communist activists from Shao Lai planned to destroy the monument. Bulldozers were used to pull down the crosses. They were taken.